Well, I have ranked the Jasons. I have ranked the Michaels. Time to bring this bitch full circle. What's going on everybody? Well, I had no plans whatsoever to do this video since Robert Anglin and Jackie Earl Haley are the only two people who have ever portrayed Freddy in feature length films. But I had a lot of people commenting on my ranking the Jasons video and especially my ranking the Michaels video saying that you should rank all the Freddies. And the more I started talking with people about it, despite the fact that there's only two actors who have portrayed Freddy, there are many different types of Freddy Krueger that has been out there in this franchise. So it actually makes a little bit of sense and I want to do it. So here we are. We're going to rank the Freddies. All the Freddies from the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, including Freddy vs. Jason, worst to best, starting right now. Number nine, bottom of the barrel. This should surprise absolutely nobody. I feel like I have bashed this thing ad nauseum, but one more shot ain't going to hurt it. It's already dead as fuck. Freddy's dead. This is not only a garbage movie, but Freddy is one of the main reasons why it is garbage. This is not even Freddy to me. This is a Looney Tunes cartoon pretending to be Freddy Krueger. The humor is god-awful. The makeup is god-awful. The portrayal by Robert Anglin, sorry, I love you, Rob, god-awful. Nothing good to say about it whatsoever. There is absolutely nothing, nothing redeeming about the performance or the portrayal of Freddy Krueger in Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. So, fuck Freddy's Dead one more time. Number nine, there you go. Number eight for me is going to be the dream child Freddy. Now, don't get ahead of yourselves. My ranking for this is not going to mimic my ranking for the films exactly, but the bottom two, for sure, that's where it's going. Dream child is basically a much, much, much less egregious version of the Freddy's Dead Freddy. It's all comedy, it's all jokey, it's all one-liners, it's not taken seriously for a split second. The makeup started to look really bad here as well. Like, Freddy's Dead and Dream Child, it just looks like bubblegum all over Robert Englund's face. So, not a fan. Not a fan at all. Number eight. Number seven is going to be the Dream Master Freddy. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. This is the movie where the scale tipped in the comedy favor. You had Dream Warriors where it was that perfect mix of scary, dark, evil Freddy and comedic one-liner cocky Freddy. Dream Master totally went over the edge and basically got rid of all the intimidation factor of Freddy and made him a giant comedian. This is the movie where it was all about the one-liners, all about the jokes. This is Freddy's movie. He's the star. And while when I was growing up as a kid, Dream Master was my favorite. It was the one that I watched the most because it was the most flamboyant, it was the most colorful, it was the most entertaining to watch. As I've gotten older, I have quite a few bones to pick with this movie, and the portrayal of Freddy Krueger is the main bone that I have to pick with it. If you had the dark, scary Freddy in this movie, this movie would be so much better in my eyes. Still not Dream Warriors or Nightmare on Elm Street, the original quality, but it would be much better than where it is right now, which is just kind of that moment when the franchise started to take a nosedive. So, number seven, Dream Master. Number six is going to be the Jackie Earl Haley Freddy from the 2009 remake, 2010, whenever the fuck it was. I actually like this portrayal of Freddy quite a bit. If it wasn't for the fact that they made him full-on child molester pedophile Freddy and got rid of the child murderer thing altogether, this would probably be in the top three. But that holds it down so much because that's so tied into this version of Freddy that he's just a child rapist and he's a sick fuck as far as just diddling kids, but he's not a child murderer. It's, it's a weird argument, I know. I know that in the original series he was also kind of a child molester and everything, but they kind of, they toned it down. It was all subtext. It was meant to be intended. It was meant to creep you out as like this underlying extra layer of creepy and evil, but in the remake, they shove it right into your face and make that in the forefront and it doesn't work that way at all. That's the reason why they didn't do that in the first place back in 1984 when they had the first original Nightmare on Elm Street. So, putting all that aside, I really, really like how they got back to the dark, serious Freddy in this. And I think Jackie Earl Haley does a really good job for what he has to work with. I've said it numerous times. If he had had a better script and a better director, I think he would have been one of the top 
two, three versions of Freddy ever. I think he would have given Robert Englund a run for his money. And I love Jackie Earl Haley as an actor. The dark, comedic Freddy is still here. Like, there's still some one-liners, like, where he's like, I was just petting him whenever he kills the dog, and whenever he's spitting some one-liners out here and there, but they're darkly comedic. It's the reason why they worked in Dream Warriors, and that's why they work here. I like the scary intimidation factor that they go for in this, trying to get back to the tone of the first movie, so a lot of things to like about this portrayal. Yes, he's in a very disappointing movie, but the portrayal of Freddy, I've always said, is the last thing wrong with this movie. With the exception of the story direction they decided to go in, with getting rid of the child murderer and going full on with the kid diddling, this is a badass version of Freddy. But that story direction just brings it down to number six. Other than that, great things. Number five is going to be the Freddy from Freddy vs. Jason. Now, I think that this is a damn good mix of Freddy yet again. I think it's the best mix version of Freddy since Dream Warriors as far as being dark, scary, serious, and having that comedic one-liner version of Freddy. I think they got a really damn good mix in this as well. Not quite as good as Dream Warriors, but pretty good. And for the movie that Freddy vs. Jason was trying to be, that's exactly what they needed to do, was get that perfect mix again. And they did a damn good job. Robert Englund, this was the last time that we're probably ever gonna see him as Freddy, and he went out with a bang as far as I'm concerned. I really love Freddy vs. Jason as a movie. I think that as far as the nightmare sequences and the intro showing kind of Freddy's origins and even like the scenes whenever he's kind of kept in the shadows like whenever he's like you know no one left to fear except fear himself scenes like that they direct freddy really well in this ronnie you knew what he was doing it's that dark intimidation factor of freddy you get the badass take no shit version of freddy whenever he's just taking on jason head on and you get the great one-liners got your nose number four is wes craven's new nightmare now, I know technically this is not Freddy. This is a demon that is just taking the personification of the character of Freddy Krueger. But aesthetically, this is Freddy. Now, as far as the movie, I think it's one of the best written, best directed, and best executed movies in this franchise. What always held it back for me personally, though, is that it wasn't the best Freddy movie. If you go to a Nightmare on Elm Street movie to see a Freddy movie, New Nightmare is not exactly going to give you what you want. So putting that aside, which is what keeps it out of the top two or three, is the fact that this is, again, dark, serious Freddy. This is Wes Craven getting back to the original intent of his character, evil, demonic. The dude is just pure fucking evil. He ain't fucking around. He ain't here to make you laugh. He's here to cut you into a thousand pieces and do it slowly, laughing the entire time that he does it. And he nails it. The look of Freddy is awesome in this with the more bone glove and the trench coat and the leather pants and everything like that. I really like the version of Freddy that they have in this. The look is great. Robert Englund killed it once again. This is one of his best portrayals of Freddy Krueger. So, new nightmare. Huge praise for what he did in that one. Number three is Freddy's Revenge. Now, despite all the weird shit that makes this movie kind of a mess, an entertaining mess, but a mess nonetheless, Freddy is at probably his darkest and arguably scariest in Freddy's Revenge. He's kept in the shadows, he's made to be evil, the voice is there, the performance by Robert Englund is there, they tried to use a stunt double and get away with it. Nah, can't do that, so they had to bring Robert Englund in and give him all the money that he asked for, and he, they spent that money well because Robert Englund is the last thing that is wrong with Freddy's Revenge. He even has like some of the really scary like one-liners where he's like, you got the body, I got the brain. And he pulls his skin back and shows the brain, does that great Freddy laugh. Ha 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 ha! Love it. I don't like the fact that he comes out into the real world. That's not really the portrayal of Freddy's fault, that's the movie's fault. So I'll just leave that there. I don't like that. But as far as how he just psychologically fucks with Jesse for the entire movie and just tries to use him as his vessel to get out into the world and you get that great body horror scene when he rips through his body and just kind of steps out of the wall, great shit. Now we are at the top two. Should be no surprise to anybody if you're a Freddy fan. This is usually the two movies that people debate. This is the two movies that always come to the top whenever I talk about Nightmare on Elm Street. So what is the best portrayal of Freddy? Is it Freddy in Dream Warriors, which is my personal favorite Nightmare on Elm Street film, or Freddy in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, number two is going to be Dream Warriors. As much as I love Dream Warriors, I have basically nothing negative to say about that movie. And I'll get into all this when I get to number one. 
I gotta go with straight dark Evil Freddy above the jokes, even though I love the mix that they have in this. So talking strictly on Dream Warriors, why it's so high on this list, why I love this portrayal of Freddy, is something that I basically hinted at, hinted at this entire video when I referenced Dream Warriors. It's that perfect balance. Whenever they wanted to go for a more comedic, more one-liner, you know, star of the movie version of Freddy, they nailed it in Dream Warriors. Absolute perfection in their execution of this character, in the writing and in Robert Englund's portrayal of it. And that little nice transition from Dark Evil Freddy into this awesome stuff. You still get Dark Evil Freddy. You still get Scary Freddy. When you get the intro to this movie and you get Kristen running from him and you just see the shadows whenever he just kind of pops out in the background and he's chasing her. That shit is scary. You would not want to be in her shoes. Whenever he gets towards the end and it's just starting to show slowly how much more powerful he is in Dream Warriors. He's got a whole chest of souls with people's faces embedded into his skin. Everything that they do to kill him, they shove a pipe through him, he pulls it out and licks the fucking blood off the end of it. Scary, awesome, dark shit. Love it. And then you get into the comedy, and the one-liners in Dream Warriors are all classic. Every single one lands. The best, welcome to primetime, bitch. That's one of the most iconic Freddy lines of all time. Everything about Freddy in Dream Warriors, to me, is perfection. That's why it's at number two. But I have a slight preference for the execution of the original Nightmare on Elm Street by Wes Craven because it is the Freddy that haunted all of our dreams, no pun intended. This is a terrifying character brought to life by Wes Craven and Robert Anglin, and it was never done better than in the original movie. Probably will never be done as well as this ever again. I can be hopeful, but realistically, probably not. The portrayal, the story, the look, the makeup, the attitude, everything that Robert Anglin and Wes Craven kind of molded together to create this character is just brilliant, genius, once in a lifetime awesomeness in this original film back in 1984. The way that Freddy physically is not all that imposing, but it's the way that he's maniacal, the way that he chases people down the hall or down the alleyway and chops his fingers off and smiles at you and peels a fucking face off and the way that his voice kind of goes from maniacal clown-like in the beginning of the movie towards the more evil that he gets and the more victims he gets throughout the movie, the darker and more demonic his voice gets. I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. That shit is awesome! God damn, I love Freddy. <sighs> Freddy, you're my boy. That is my ranking the Freddies, guys. I don't really have anything else more to say about it. That, that pretty much sums everything up. I've talked about Nightmare on Elm Street and Dream Warriors ad nauseum, so... Should have been no surprise those are in a, as my top two, but there is my ranking of the Freddies. So all you guys that have asked me to do it, this is my gift to you. Thank you for the suggestion. I would have probably never did it because I thought it was silly to do for two actors, but when you start thinking about all the different portrayals of Freddy, it actually makes sense to rank them because there's wildly different portrayals, like I said in the intro. So thank you guys for the suggestion. I hope you enjoyed the video. So. Hope you liked it. Like and share this video, please. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you guys wanna check out some of my social media links, you can check the video description below for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my Spreadshirt store for cool Cody Leach merchandise like t-shirts, tote bags, coffee mugs, all kinds of cool shit with awesome designs designed by the great Woody Bowen. So check that out, guys. And my Patreon page, which also has a link down below, which is a great way to give back to this channel, help this channel grow, and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only if you decide to become a patron. So if you guys check all that out, please. And if you'd like to check out some more of my videos, including my ranking and reviewing of the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise and my ranking the Jasons and ranking the Michaels videos, you can check those all out by clicking right over here. Ah! <laughs>